time and we can have a chat with a very, very special person live on this stage. And I'm so pleased that so many of you have turned out following the uh, support of Lee Coombs from the Save Donington Park campaign. And you've come and pledged your support to try and uh, put this circuit back on the map. So look at the turnout here. It's also very, very busy down the other end. And it's just uh, a testimony to your belief in the future of this wonderful venue. But uh, without further ado, it is now my pleasure on behalf of the Save Donington Park campaign to welcome live on this stage, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Kevin Wheatcrofts. Kevin, welcome along. A special day for you today, I'm sure. Certainly is, yeah. Now, before we just go into our little chat about a few questions that a lot of people uh, want to want me to ask, is that, of course, we offer our sincere um, thoughts about the loss of, of Tom, a, a fantastic guy who left a wonderful legacy of Donington Park and brought Donington Park, the motor racing side of it, back in 1977, that far back, which I'm sure, Kevin, you'll remember very, very well indeed. Now, normally in circumstances like this, we, we ask for a little bit of silence or whatever. I don't think we ought to do that today. I think we ought to salute the work that Tom Wheatcroft put into this circuit by a huge round of applause and salute that man. Absolutely. Now, of course, Kevin, your name's still synonymous with the circuit, and uh, as the landowner, you must look out there at the moment and feel devastated as to what has happened to this racing circuit. How do you feel? Well, that's one word for it, yes. Um, yeah, a lot of it was senseless uh, destruction. Um, we shouldn't be where we are. We should be running, um, but we are where we are. Uh, we inherited this back on uh, Christmas Eve, and um, we're doing our very best to identify um, uh, an operator to go forward. Um, I'm in no rush to do it. As much as I want to see racing back here, I want to make the right decision for Donington. I don't certainly don't want to be here again in 12 months' time saying it failed again. Um, we need to identify a good, strong business plan to go forward. Um, you know, it's my wish to see Donington back where it was, uh, as much for me, as much for the fans, and as much for my father's memory. Absolutely. Now, of course, uh, the lease was, was being run by someone else who we all know. We don't have to go mentioning names, but uh, let us just say that you were watching what has been done. Was it completely out of your control to, to say, hang on, there's too much money being spent, other people's money being spent here. It can't happen. You're not going to get F1 here. Did you ever think to say to, to that man, stop, hang on, don't do any more damage to my pride and joy? Yeah, I'd like you to have been present on some of the meetings. Yes, I did tell him. Um, but, you know, he was a believable character. And to a large degree, yeah, he'd, he'd got the dream. Um, there was a plan there. And I think maybe if the economics weren't the way it was, um, then he would, you know, he could have pulled it off. Um, but he didn't, so... Do you think any of this was a, a, a giant chess game of Bernie Eccleston to actually give Silverstone a kick up the bum to actually keep Formula One there? Do you think there was ever an underlying current of problems that he was never ever going to pull off in the first place? Yeah, I'm sure there's, there's probably a, a bit of that is true. Um, but then Bernie's been very supportive of Donington in the past. Um, Would he ever buy it? No, he, he's he's not a he's not a racetrack operator. No. A lot of people have asked that. Why doesn't Bernie come in and uh, you know take the lease on? He's got the money to do it. He could invest a huge amount of money into not having Formula One here now because that's gone back to Silverstone, and we don't mind that, do we? No. Exactly. I mean, everybody seems to be quite happy for them to keep Formula One there. Um, but the future of motorsport here at Donington yeah. Park, it's been going on since 77 now, revitalised. We've got to get it back. Are you convinced, Kevin, 100% that we will? I'm convinced, otherwise I wouldn't be brave enough to stand on this stage and uh, talk to you. Um, you know, we've had a lot of great offers to turn this into a development site. I've rejected everyone. You know, this place is for motorsport. You, you can sense that here today. Um, that's what it's going to be and that's what it's going to stay. A lot of people, you, you just said that, a lot of people have said, oh, we, we, we've heard that the airport's going to be buying it and in 10 years' time this is going to be a massive airport car park. That would just be a travesty. 
Yeah, well, it's been, you know, it's been a history of motorsport it's since 1931. Um, it's been interrupted a few times, but, you know, it's always got back on its feet and done what it does, and we'll do it again, definitely. Absolutely. Now, where do we stand? I'm just prying a little bit deeper now. Where do we stand with future leaseholders of this venue, the people that have got the passion to get the motorsport back here? Who's in the wings? Who Can we mention any names? Um, no, I can't mention names, but um, we've, we've had over 25 seriously interested parties, and it's took a long time to whittle that down to three. Um, all three are on a, a similar par, and I want to get operating as quick as ever possible. So my view is it's the first one now that can go through the legal hurdles and get there to signature. Um, and then I want to be back here announcing that we've got somebody and give you some dates. The problem is, of course, Kevin, when things like this happen to a fantastic circuit or any other business, the worst thing is rumours. Because a lot of the time, rumours aren't true. Everyone thinks they know what might be happening. No one knows but yourself and the businesses that are involved what is actually happening. So, of course, the rumours, especially where the money side is concerned, how much do you think it will cost in real pound, shilling and pence terms to get this motor racing circuit back to being operable? Because at the moment, totally inoperable. Um, to get it back to where it was... Um, it's our firm belief is about 1.5 million pounds um, to get the gates open again and to be honest if, if this fund carries on rising like it is today we, we can achieve that today I mean it's just amazing um, the donations uh, promises of help um, but again you know I don't want to be premature about this I want to see a long-term business plan I want to make sure that everything makes sense before we start sinking real money into the ground um, once we do get open, and I'm convinced like you that we will, do you think we'll get things like the MotoGP back at Donington Park? I certainly uh, would love to see it back, and if I've got anything to do with it, I'll, I'll push every way I know how to, to get it back. Um, it belongs here, everybody wants it, um, they don't want it where it's gone, um, you know, I'm not after stealing anything back, but this is the home. Absolutely. And are there teams in the wings waiting for that button to be pushed to say, look, we are opening in X amount of months, you can book the circuit now. Are there teams just waiting there to come back to Donington Park? Absolutely. My, my phone hasn't stopped ringing since Christmas. And what about things like Touring Car? I mean, they must be certainly on the top of the list somewhere. They're on the top of my list. I, you know, I want them, I want them here. Um, I, I want to claw back whatever we can. F1's great, but if it doesn't make financial sense, it's pointless chasing that. Absolutely. And um, how long then, time limit wise, are we going to have to wait? Will it be this year? Can you actually say by, you know, autumn maybe we might have a circuit out there that is usable? Yeah, I'm, I'm quite confident that towards the end of this season we can salvage some of the events that are still penciled in our calendar. Now, talking about the damage out there on the circuit, and I know a few of you have been out there walking through coppice and had a look at some of the mighty holes that we see. One particular major problem on the circuit was the new tunnel that was built. Did, did they actually need that tunnel in the first place? Well, the tunnel uh, made sense um, to access the, the infield for F1, but beyond that, no, it doesn't. But it's there. They ran out of money. Um, it only wants finishing, uh, and it's a perfectly good asset for the circuit. And can that be repaired? Because it looks a bit of a mess at the moment. It looks a bit of a mess, but I think when we get it pumped out and cleaned out, yeah, that, that, that'll, be, uh, that'll be up in operation before the year's out. Well, I think you can see, ladies and gentlemen, by the chat here that um, Kevin is as passionate as each and every one of you out there to get this circuit back on its feet and get it open. And uh, I think you'll agree that with your help, with Kevin's help and with the help of some investors and some big companies that are going to come back here and do everything they can then we should see motorsport back at Donington Park before too long and I think that deserves another round of applause. Let's hear it ladies and gentlemen. Just hang on there one second please Kevin.